Good morning, y'all. I'm back with another video, and this time it is going to be a week in a life vlog. I am going to be sharing my first week of clinical rotations with you. So, I, if you haven't seen my video on what the clinical clerkships are all about, please uh, hit this little plug up here and check it out. And then, you know, I, I mentioned that I was starting on my psych rotation first, and today we have our orientation. So, that's going to be from 9 to 5 at one of the psych clinics, and that's basically going to give us a rundown of what to expect on the psych rotation. I mentioned in my other video that I had clerkship orientation, which is like a broader overview of what to expect from clinical rotations as a whole, but this one is going to be more geared, today's is going to be more geared to specifically the psych rotation. So I'm excited. Um, I'm finally getting back into my routine of getting up early in the morning to get to the gym, to work out. And uh, my plan right now is to wake up at 4.30 every morning and be at the gym by like 5.30 and out by seven so i find from myself that it's easier for me to work out in the mornings uh, because there's not much that can get in the way in the morning and uh, i actually woke up a, earlier than my alarm today because my apartment complex decided it wanted to have a fire alarm drill for the second night in a row at 3 45 in the morning so i figured i was already up i'm not going to go back to sleep <clears throat> so I just like got myself together, got my clothes ready, my gym bag, walked my dog, got some um, chai tea, and now I'm at the gym, just warming up, and uh, I'm about to do this high intensity training group class in about 15 minutes or less, in about, yeah, 10 minutes, so yeah, I just wanted to come and got, kind of give you all an update. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go do that right now. What are you waiting for? And make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Tell me how you start your days, especially Mondays, because I feel like you have to hit the ground running on a Monday. That sets the tone for your week. It sets the tone for your day. Um, and share this video with a friend that you think may be interested in learning more about what life is like in med school or just need some like encouragement, inspiration, or motivation. Right, workout is complete. I did high intensity training, high intensity interval training, and now I am out. It's about 7.15 and I am on my way to the clinic. And um, yeah, I'm excited for orientation. I'm gonna probably sit there for a little bit and do some work, review some stuff, and then get ready for orientation to start. So I just got to the conference room that we're having our orientation in. You can see it behind me. I am the only one here right now because I'm an early. I'm an hour early. And the only reason why I'm an hour early is because I just came straight from the gym. And I wanted some time to do some work and make sure that I knew where I was going. Hey guys, I'm back. and. I just got out of orientation. It is 3.45, we got out a little late. I mean, we got out a little earlier because one of our lecturers didn't show up. So that lecture needs to be rescheduled, but at least we get to get out for the day a little early. And um, today was very, very uh, informative. We had a lot of lectures on, you know, like what to expect from the psych clerkship. We had a couple lectures, one on si um, suicide and like suicide risk and one on the mental status exams, how to be safe and protect ourselves in situations that where there's like a risk of danger or violence, you know, from a patient, what to do. So each of us has to go to two AA meetings and basically we just go as students and we kind of just are flies on the wall and just listening and learning how an AA meeting is conducted. And um, then, so I'm actually doing one of them tonight me and a couple of uh, the other students that are in my rotation group, we're gonna just go tonight and see what it's all about. And then um, I'm gonna do another one next week. So I start on like addiction medicine. So it's gonna be great to get this like exposure to um, substance abuse. So I have that tonight. And then let's see, I also scheduled my calls. So we are required to do one 
short call which is about three hours from like 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. and that's just basically when you're on call in the hospital and you know you have to stay there and any patients that have come in or admitted you you help the resident take care of that patient so I have one that's gonna be from 8 to 11 on the weekday and then one that's gonna be I think a 12 hour shift on a Saturday so I'm trying to get those um, completed early on in my rotation because I figure as the rotation the later we get into the rotation I'm gonna want to study more for my exam so yeah good morning guys I am back and it is Tuesday now and um, I just arrived to my first clinical site and I am very very excited and nervous all at the same time it is I think it's about it's almost seven o'clock um, we're supposed to be here at 7 30 but I wanted to be early because you know I, from all of, a lot of the feedback that I got from you know the conference that I went to and from the panels that we had during orientation is that you want to be there early and so this is my addiction medicine week one of two of my addiction medicine weeks I spend one week at this clinic and then I move to another clinic um, next week I can't even lie guys like my stomach is like oh I'm nervous but I'm excited this is like this is why I came to medical school oh I think one of my classmates is pulling up now so yeah you see my white coat back there i bought some new pins for my white coat i can show you all that let me know if you all want like a um what's in my white coat and what's in my uh clinical bag type of video because i'd be happy to do one of those for you but all in all yeah what i feel right now is just nervous anxiety and just you know i don't know what to expect but i am open and i am ready and just like the video that I dropped what like uh, the other day uh, <clears throat> and reading the comments that you all have put about you know my videos being so helpful and inspiring and how you all keep what you want you keep you want me to keep doing this it uh, keeps me going and I know that this is not for nothing I know that this is this what I'm doing here sharing these videos with you sharing my story with you I know that there is like some greater purpose for this and if I can even just help one person if I can just even inspire one person then I am fulfilled I am fulfilled but of course I want to help as many people as I can that's just like the nature of who I am um, so that's why I'm on this platform and in order to continue to be able to do things like this I need you all to subscribe to my channel continue commenting like share 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 so these there's so many pre-meds there's so many nursing students there's so many people who are interested in stem and science and all these things and even if you're not like it's just I feel like there's something for there's a takeaway for everyone so please share with your friends your family members um, your classmates and let me know comment down below with what any videos that you want to see um, just keep in mind that I'm, I'm I'm really only one person and I'm also a student at the same time in a very rigorous program so I can't do as much as I would like to do and as much as you all would like me to do but just know that I am trying my best and I am trying really hard working behind the scenes trying to make things happen um, and I do it all on my own I do it all on my own and with the help of you all promoting me and sharing and supporting me and sending your love because that keeps me going also another thing I wanted to say was um, so being in clinical clerkships like my videos are gonna be a little different now um, first and second year I was able to show you like a lot more but because of HIPAA and co patient confidentiality and patient rights I will not be able to show you inside the clinics I will not be able to show you inside of the hospital um, for those of you who are in the medical field or going into the medical field you understand that patient confidentiality is nothing to be played with and I am not the one <laughs> I am not the one that's gonna get in trouble um, so as much as I would want to show you all this is not Grey's Anatomy and this is real life and I can't uh, I have to protect the patients that we serve and so I will do my best to be as descriptive as possible and let you all know play by play what's going on in my world and what's happening um, but just 
just want to kind of give you all a heads up of the changes that are coming but my videos are still gonna be popping um, <laughs> if I can help it and I just appreciate all of your love and your support and I am excited it's about seven o'clock so I'm wondering if I should go in a little early ah! I can't believe this oh, look at that I'm gonna be a doctor guys isn't that so just uh, wow hello guys it is about what like 2 30 and I am out of clinic early I got Publix behind me I had to go pick up some prescriptions and now I am on my way to the VA I told you all that I went to the VA to have my photo taken for my VA badge but they called me and they told me that it was ready so I am going there to pick it up since I got out early and I have time to get there before their office closes. Whew. All right, I got my badge. Let's see. The picture looks decent. It also came on a very nice lanyard. One VA. Let's see, did I slay? Did I slay? We had to look serious, we couldn't smile. Hey guys, I am back home now and I'm ready to update you on my first day of uh, clinic. Um, I spent the morning in the methadone clinic with one attending. We basically saw patients who had a history of opioid abuse and addiction. We saw about 10 patients in the morning. You know, some patients were motivated to get treatment and to detox and you know just were there to see what they needed to do um, and then we had other patients who were not doing so well on a lot of narcotics not very motivated to, to get treatment blood pressure through the roof we had a, a very a variety of patients you know we saw we did some intakes we did some follow-ups we did some annual checkups and I feel like I learned a lot like my attending asked me a lot of questions it was very engaging we actually had one patient who came in and was like uh, had like symptoms of opioid withdrawal so we had to up her methadone dose but she, you know she came in she was sweating she was tremulous you know she had myalgia she was cramping um, it was like pretty textbook and so he the doctor increased her dose um, after morning clinic I went for lunch and I sat in this park that's like right next to the site that I was on or the site that I was at and I just reviewed some first aid for psychiatry and um, enjoyed like the weather it's a very nice day out today and then um, went back to clinic for afternoon clinic then I was in the buprenorphine clinic and uh, saw some more patients there so basically I learned about the difference between methadone treatment and buprenorphine treatment and I learned the dosing schedule, the dosing protocol, I learned the, uh, what's it called, the tapering protocol. Um, so our attending gave us an assignment, he gave us some reading to do, and I'm pretty sure that tomorrow he's going to be asking us questions, so I'm going to start reading that. <clears throat> yeah, in a little bit my boyfriend and his friends are coming over and we're all going to study. Wednesday it's the end of clinic day two of my psych rotation and I um, am very happy with how today went last night or yesterday during clinic my, one of the attendings gave me and the other medical student a reading assignment that was like 30 
30 pages long. It was on the neurobiology of addiction. So he gave us that assignment to read. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I have my, my plan, my own study plan. Like, how am I going to fit this 30 page article into what I have to do? But I could tell he like really meant for us to read it to, like last night. So I did. And it was actually very, very, very interesting. And um, if I can find it online, I'll put the link to it. Um, basically, the chapter that we had to read was on the neurobiology of addiction. And um, it basically talked about how the brain, different areas of the brain work together to um, facilitate the addiction cycle. It, I thought it was like extremely interesting. It made me think about how I view addiction um, and how uh, and how people view addiction in general. Um, you know, I've heard things like, you know, why would anyone ever do drugs? Why would they put them in their body? You know, that's just dumb, all of these things. But if you know the background, if you know how addiction works on a physiological level, I think we would show less judgment and more empathy because it is a disease. Addiction is a disease, um, whether it's alcohol or drugs, you know, narcotics, what have you, it's serious. You know, so when we went into clinic this morning, the attending sat down with us for about, I think about two hours. So we, he basically like explained it to us. He asked us a lot of questions. Um, asking, getting asked questions is always nerve wracking. But what I found is I, what I'm choosing to do is let going, let, letting go of the need to know it all. It's like an unrealistic pressure to put on yourself. Like you're not going to get every answer correct you may get a lot of them wrong but what's important is that you're trying and you're there and you have the mindset that you're there to learn not there to showcase how much you know like i'm not saying that you don't need to showcase what you know you need to show that you're competent but just have a little grace and be kind to yourself if you don't get a question right you know i didn't get a question right but i didn't i didn't beat myself up for it i didn't say oh you're you know stupid you're dumb how could you not have known that? even things that i knew i knew but wasn't confident in saying you just gotta roll with the punches and that's why I'm like really happy that I'm I'm starting on psych and it's just like a great way to ease into rotations and plus psychiatrists are just really chill they're chill individuals at least the ones that I've encountered no before we went to lunch we went to a clinic for IV drug user, IV drug users who have pick lines and um, we basically interviewed a patient who was who has a pick line and took a full history and did like a focused a very very brief focused physical and then after that I presented I sat down with the attending and with the other medical student and um, he took me through the flow of the oral presentation which was really helpful and I think that I am blessed and I got very I'm not gonna say lucky I am very blessed to be paired with the student that I'm pairing I'm paired with because he is a third year medical student who already completed most of his rotations and so he has been through this already he's very kind and he's been helping me out giving me tips and resources and like that's what it's about it's not about competing with one another throwing people under the bus or like trying to look better than someone or anything like that I'm I like this interaction where it's like we're both in the same boat we're both trying to accomplish the same thing if I know something I'm gonna help you if you know something you're willing to help me it just makes it a more pleasant environment to be in you know that's not how it always is for everyone and I just hope that this tone maintains throughout the rest of the year and I think that I'm with an amazing rotation group there's about 17 of us in my rotation group and we'll all be going through the same clerkships at the same time, just in different locations. But already we have a group me, you know, we've been helping each other, we've been sharing information. It's just like, that is gonna make it, no one likes a, a cutthroat gunner, nobody. Except for probably other cutthroat gunners, I don't know. But it's nice to be in an environment and around people who are supportive and who care about community and care about helping each other. Because at the end of the day, if you can't help the person standing right next to you who's doing the same thing as you how can you claim to be of service and to be someone who helps i don't know i don't know guys but anyways off my soapbox my best friend sent me a package and i am very excited to open it i was not expecting this and my best friend is a hairdresser in boston and she's just she's amazing we've been best friends 20 years i don't even like ridiculous amount of time um 
and she sent me a package from Boston. I think it's a care package, even though it says liquid. So we'll see what I got. Oh my goodness. No, she did it. No way. Oh my God, I've been waiting for this. Oh my goodness. Guys, she used these products in my hair when she when I was in Boston and she did my hair and they were oh, oh my gosh guys. I gotta call you. I got, guys, I gotta call her, I gotta call you back. I mean I, I gotta I, I gotta go guys. Bye. Hey guys, it's Thursday and it's about 3.40 in the afternoon and I am back at home and I am doing some U World questions right now. I have a little bit of time before I am working my first call shift tonight, which is from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. at one of the local uh, mental health hospitals, institutions, and I really don't know what to expect, but we'll see. I'll update you all afterwards, but right now I'm just, I just want to do some reading and do some questions before I am there all night. Here's a question. A 42-year-old woman, gravid of one para one, come to the office for evaluation of insomnia following the birth of her son five weeks ago. The patient says she wakes up each night to breastfeed him, but is unable to go back to sleep. She stays up most of the night thinking, why did I have this child so late in life? What if something happens to me and I can't take care of him? The patient had a decreased appetite and no interest in seeing friends or family members. She has no medical history and delivery was uncomplicated. Physical exam shows no abnormalities on mental status exam. The patient appears restless and is tearful. What is the most likely diagnosis? <laughs> diagnosis. Hmm. So I ended up choosing the incorrect answer, but it's good because this is a learning experience. And what usually happens is I can narrow it down to two, and then sometimes I just pick the wrong one. And it's all about paying attention to like some detail that's in the questions then. Hmm. All right, we'll see what happens at the end of all of this. So this tells you how many people got the correct answer and how many people chose like these incorrect answers. So at least I got the top two choices that most people chose. All right, so this question basically talks about a 47-year-old man who has a history of schizoaffective disorder. He's taking lithium and risperidone, which have improved his psychiatric symptoms. He's experiencing some what looks like tardive dyskinesia, which is an extrapyramidal symptom or side effect of antipsychotics. He's treated with valbenazine with no improvement. So what's the most appropriate next step in management for this patient? I will say um, to switch from risperidone to clozapine, which is a safer, well, okay, it can cause agranulocytosis, but it's a relatively safer antipsychotic. Benztropine, diphenhydramine, propanolol are all used to treat EPS or like uh, akathisia, um, acute dystonia, and Parkinsonism, but I'm not really sure that they are used to treat tardive dyskinesia and, and he's already had a reduction trial and lowering his dose of risperidone, but lithium is a mood stabilizer that doesn't cause EPS, so I don't think decreasing any of these, we'll see. And yay, I did it. All right, let's see how I did. Yay, 75%, I'm above average, I'll take it. And be happy. Mercy. Good morning, guys. It is Friday, and I'm on my way to clinic. It's about seven thirty in the morning. And I cannot believe that today is my last day of my first week of clinical rotations. Like, time really flies. <laughs> I've had such a great experience on my first week of addiction medicine and on a psych rotation. My attendings were amazing. We learned a lot. Um, 
which definitely changed my <clears throat> my outlook and my perspective on addiction and caring for those who are are addicted to um, substances such as like drugs and alcohol and um, yeah I'm excited <clears throat> to continue on with this clerkship I actually like psych like, what I've seen so far um, and like the impact that you can actually make with your patients in their lives by just being there and being supportive and not like kicking them while they're already down. Yeah, it's been pretty laid back, but I know that clerkships aren't gonna continue to be <laughs> laid back, but this is a great way to start. Um, I've been sticking with my study schedule and um, been doing um, my practice questions, my practice questions every day, been reading every day. I am going to continue on that path. But I am here and I'm parking and I will see you all in a little bit. Bye.